In this lecture, we will consider the idea of the fatigue failure. Normally, it is very difficult to estimate the life and the failure criteria for the failures in the fatigue failure. The fatigue failure is due to the progressive damage or a fracture of a material caused by repeated cycles of stress or strain. Number of components we have like a crankcase where the, num where the forces direction continuously changes as well as magnitude and also changes. In that case, we will find here the stresses nature will change as well as the magnitude also change. We normally come across three types of st uh, stress like a fully reverse, fluctuating or repeated type of stress. Let us discuss one by one. Here the first case is a fully reverse case. In this case, we have this axis is equals to the time axis and this axis is equal to sigma axis. Here the maximum value will be equal to sigma max and this value will be equal to sigma minimum. The mean value will be equal, the sigma max and sigma minimum are the same amplitude that is sigma v is equal to sigma a. So this max and minimum will be the same distance from the zero axis. So sigma mean, uh, sigma mean value will be equal to sigma max positive value and same is the sigma negative value. So sigma mean will be equal to zero. This type of stress is called as fully reverse stress because it is positive on one side and the same magnitude on the negative on the other side. The second type of stress is called as the fluctuating stress and is fluctuating stress is normally is a same uh, value or the same tension or compression on same side. So this is tension as well as tension. Here this is tension and this one is compression. So here the, uh, the sign convention, the sign will change. Here the sign will remain same. So this value will be called as sigma mean and here this value will be called as max and this will be sigma minimum here both values are positive the sigma mean will be equals to the mean of these two and the sigma amplitude will be equals to this value or it can be this value this is type of stress is called as fluctuating and the third one is repeated stress where the sigma mean will be equals to zero here sigma mean is positive and here sigma mean is negative so sigma max will be this value and sigma mean will be the this value which is again the same the mean value of these two the fatigue loading is that we can't, is the fatigue loading does not show any types of symptoms before it fails. So it is very precisely calculated that what is the your static loading. In the case of static loading, we can see the yielding before it failures. But in fatigue loading, you can't see such type of symptoms. So normally to calculate the stress strain, to calculate the stress stresses life diagram, that is the number of cycles is used, which is normally called as SN curve. And this curve is plotted with the sigma and the number of cycles. Here x axis is used for, for plotting the life that is the number of cycles and y axis is used for plotting the sigma. This axis is semi log axis and this one is plane axis. On this one we plot a 10 to the power 3. This start with SUT. This point is called as knee point. And we have 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 4 like this one. The knee point is obtained at 10 to the power 6 and 10 to the power 8 will be considered as infinite life from 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 8. And we have one line here where the slope changes. This type of diagram is basically obtained from using the rotating beam loading diagram and that is a fatigue test equipment. Here the number of sample points will come across this one. So if we join all those points, we will get a approximately this curve. Here this point represents 10 to the power 3. So from this cycle to this cycle, it is called as low cycle. And onwards from 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 8, it is called as high cycle. This point represents 10 to the power 3 cycles and the region from 1 to 10 to the power 3 cycles is normally called as low cycle and 10, 3, 10 to the power 3 onwards 10 to the power 8 it is normally called as the high cycle region. 10 to the power 3 cycle is normally used for the static loading and this one from 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 8 is normally used for high cycle loading. At 10 to the power 7, if I take this 10 to the power 7 and I draw a vertical line, then from region from 10 to the power 0 to 10 to the power 7, this range represents the finite life. There is a some region overlap from 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 7. We have number of cycles greater than 10 to the power 6, it is stated as the infinite life and the corresponding value of the stress. will be called as the endurance strength. So this value here is called as endurance strength. 
on y axis the stress is normally called as the fatigue strain or or the flow stress what is normally called as the fatigue strain and if the fatigue strain is equal to 10 to the power 6 then we have a infinite life so if we have attained a 10 to the power 6 cycles then the that is the flow stress will attain the value of se then it is called as then it is called as the infinite life this value of se dash this value of se is for standard test but the whatever the standard test we are carry out there are the various types of loading we have axial loading then we have different temperature factors then we have uh, radius corners so this value of se is modified and we are using se dash is a modified endurance strength and this value is to be used using the marine factors so marine equation is normally used to calculate the modified value of endurance strength and these are called as the modification factors now from experiment the modified endurance strength can be directly calculated and in the case of steel the value of endurance strength will be 0.5 of SUT if SUT is less than 1400 and for endurance strength if your value of SUT is greater than 1400 then you can take the value is equal to 700 so this is a standard practice preferred in the industry where uh, for only for steel the modified endurance strength is taken as 0.5 of SUT if SUT is less than 1400 and if SUT is more than 1400 then the endurance strength is taken as 700. The various marine factors are involved and they can be labeled as SE is equals to KA, KB, KC, KD, KE, KF and SE dash. So here the SE will be your the value that is to be used for designing k k b all these factors are called as modified factors and se dash is the value obtained from the lab so here k is called as surface uh, factor the surface factor depends upon what type of finish you are using whether the ground finish machine cold drawn hot roll or fold and this is normally given in the form of k as uh, k is equals uh, k a that is called as the surface factor equal to a times s u t b in data book you will find a and b constant for the various type of finish use say for ground the factor a is 1.58 and for the exponent will be equals to minus 0 0.085 so this data is collected in the data book we will take here one example suppose s u t equal to 500 and we have a ground finish so for ground finish the value of a equal to 1.58 and b equals to minus 0 0.085 so to find out the value of k we have to just substitute the value of a sut and b so if you substitute this value 1.58 as a a value sut is 500 so what you get is 1.58 multiplied by 500 into point to the 0 0.085 and what you get is obtain the value of k is equals to 0.93 so this is how you can use the value for the k factor using this data and suppose we have SUT equal to 400 and our condition is the surface finish is forged then for forged we have A equal to 272 and B is equal to minus 0 0.995 in that case we can calculate k is in the same equation k into SUT to the power B so A is equal to 272 multiplied by 450 to the power Point, uh, minus 0 0.995 in that case you will get k equal to 0 0.62 now here the ground finish means fine finish and the forge means in the case of forging we are very coarse finish so the marine has given the factors and the modification factors are k kb kc kd ke kf right now we have discussed the value of k which is called as surface factor which can be modified using the factor a and b and is given by k equals to a times sut multiplied by b the second factor involved in the marine equation is kb and this kb is normally is called as the size factor this factor is important because whatever the testing we are carrying out it is carried out at standard parts and normally we are using the different parts as compared to the standard specimen so the kb is normally calculated using the two equations that is given here kb equal to d divided by 7.62 to the power minus 0.107 where the diameter is between 2.79 to 51 and if the diameter exceeds than 51 mm to 254 then this kb is calculated using 1.51 d to the power minus 1.157 even the kb is also depending upon what type of loading we have for example in the case of bending 
suppose our test specimen has a certain bending or we have a axial loading then the kb is taken as normally equals to 1 and in case of the bending depending upon the size of d the value will be calculated like this so here this is a regular geometry and this is a diameter d of the specimen and this diameter d has to be used in this equation and the constraints are given here up to 51 to 2.79 the diameter is calculated as the first relation and from 51 to 254 you have to calculate using this relation the third factor involved is called as the loading factor kc in the case of the bending it is equals to 1 in the case of axial loading kc is normally taken as 0.85 and whereas in the case of torsional loading the value of kc is taken as 1.1 so here which we have dif uh, discussed right now three factors one is kb kc and k k kb and kc where k is called as surface factor kb is called as size factor and kc is called as the loading factor the fourth factor in this equation is kd factor and this factor is called as temperature factor and this factor normally depends upon the temperature that we are using suppose the temperature will change the value of kt will also change the data is available in the data book the fifth factor involved in the series is ke and it is called as reliability factor and is normally given by ke equal to 1 minus 0 0.08 times z a so reliability can be having 50 percent 90 percent to 99 percent and ZA value will change from 0 to maximum value of 2.376 and K will be equals to 0.814. Depending upon reliability what you want, you can substitute the value of ZA and KE and you can calculate the value of KE from this equation. If your reliability is 50%, then KE will be equals to 1 and if the reliability, reliability equals to 99%, your KE value will fall to 0.814. The last factor is Km and this factor is called as miscellaneous factor. Any other factor other than this in will be included in the miscellaneous factor. So whatever the value of SE we obtain in the laboratory that is SE dash is to be modified using marine factor and is given by marine and the K, KB that is the surface factor, size factor, loading factor, then temperature factor, reliability factor and miscellaneous factor. And we have seen the how to calculate this value. After you modify this value, you are able to calculate the value of SE in your SN diagram and this diagram is given as we have discussed initially. So this axis is equals to your number of cycles. This is sigma axis at knee point where value is 10 to the power 6. This value is SE. For this region approximately SN diagram is for high cycle is considered as greater than 10 to the power 3. If we consider the points here, the line between 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power uh, 6 that is from point A to point B that is up to this diagram only. So A has a certain coordinate x equals to x coordinate is uh, 10 to the power 3 and y coordinate is SF. The value of A on x axis is given by F times multiplied by SUT. F is a factor which depend on SUT. We will discuss this relation just now. But before this we have the coordinate of A which is the x coordinate is 10 to the power 3 and y coordinate is F times SUT. Whereas the coordinate of B the x coordinate is 10 to the power 6 and this F is called as the fatigue strength fraction. The value of B the x coordinate is 10 to the power 6 and the x y value is SE. So using this A and B we can draw a, the, we can form the equation of a straight line. The value of f is calculated is a y axis and SUT is plotted on this one. The maximum value is 0.9. For SUT, this is lowest value of SUT. For lowest value of SUT is 0.9. Later on, the value of f will go on decreasing. As 1400, the value will fall very small. For any value less than 390, f is normally taken as 0.9. If the whole data is plotted on the log log scale, then we have the equation of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c. On y, we are using on y axis we are using the flow stress and x axis we are using the number of cycles. So we have y is replaced by log of sf a x is your ln of number of cycles plus b. From the point a and b if you substitute you can obtain the constants here. If you substitute from a value in this equation and b value in this equation we can solve for a and b and we get a is equals to if you eliminate the log here what you get is sf a this is n to the power b and 
if we get this equation the value of a will be obtained as f times s u t to the power whole square divided by s e and b will be equals to minus 1 by 3 log of f into s u t by s e we can obtain this to constant a and b by putting the two values or two boundary condition one is a and one is b for completely reverse torsion you can replace s u t with the value of s s u which is equals to 0.67 of s u t sigma amplitude is replaced by tau a and s e equation we have to take the k c equals to 0.59 value of a and b are calculated using this equation if we substitute again the boundary condition in the case of static loading the fatigue stress concentration factor are not considered fatigue stress concentration factor is given by k f and k f s for shear k f is normally used for tensile and k f s is normally used for shear in static loading for ductile material we do not consider the kf and kfs but for fatigue loading of a ductile material we have to consider the value of kf and kfs as well as in the case of brittle material in the value of kf is normally given by 1 plus q times kt minus 1 where kt is called as theoretical stress concentration factor and the q is called as non sensitivity if non sensitivity is equals to 1 and in case of the torsion we have given kfs equals to 1 plus qs into 1 kts minus 1 if the uh, kf is normally defined as the maximum stress in the notch specimen upon the stress in the notch so simply the stress in a notch specimen if the value of q is equals to 1 then we get kf is equal to kt and if q is equals to 0 we will get kf equals to 1 so, these equations are normally used for in the case of the fatigue loading.